Good morning, Toastmasters. Good morning, scientists. I'll warn you up front, this video will be a little bit longer than they usually are for two reasons. One, we are covering everything. Two, I've already given this speech to Toastmasters. That means I'm not trying to cram it into fit their uh, timelines, their schedule. I'm not gonna cut things out at the last minute like I have to sometimes. Just sit back and enjoy it. Give yourself a little bit longer to see this and let's go through life, the universe and everything. We'll begin with, take a look at these two cartoons. I want you to think about the, uh, the boat on the left. Do you know the name of it? Then look at the cartoon on the right. I want you to tell the name of the gentleman on the right. Regardless of your faith, regardless of how many years it's been since you've gone to a service or read a book, a certain book or anything, you probably know the answer to both these questions because it is so ingrained in our society. Well, today I wanna to ingrain you with Sciences Society so you can understand some of the discoveries that are being made and some of the details that we'll go over in future speeches. I'm not trying to change your beliefs. I don't care what you believe, I care what you are exposed to. What is the purpose of these Kissing Cousin Chattaquas? It's to help you, the general public, understand the universe and to prepare the, the tools for future challenges. I'm gonna parse it down billions of years of history to 20 something slides and a 10 minute Toastmaster speech. In Kissing Cousin Chattaqua 2, we touched briefly on the rising star dig. I can't expand on those findings without first covering some basics. I will keep the technical details in all Kissing Cousin Chattaquas to a minimum. I'm not a scientist, I'm a storyteller. Let's begin with looking at rainbow, visible light. We, with our naked eyes, we can see from violet all the way through to red. Without help, we can't see infrared, we can't see ultraviolet. And for much of humanity's existence, we did not know those. We finally, after many, many centuries, came up with devices that let us see those other waves. This is a metaphor for a lot that's gonna go on in this entire speech. How has the consensus of universe changed over time? In the very beginning, mankind is separated and far above the animal kingdom. Mankind appeared the sixth day of creation and the names of the family patriarchs have been perfectly recorded showing the earth has been around for some six to 7,000 years. Then it, the earth is the center of everything, a flat disk that the sun, moon and stars rotate around Angels and similar beings live up in the heavens. Devils and the like live below the surface. Now, to be fair, there were some prodigy mathematicians 3,000 years ago that understood the earth was a globe and they figured out how to within 10% the size and surface area of the planet. Then with the assistance of crude lenses and later with Newton's theory of gravity, we decided the sun is labeled the center of the universe and that the earth and the wanderers, planets, circle around the sun. For their trouble of discovering this, these scientists were censored or placed under house arrest about 500 years ago. How has the general consensus, consensus changed? Or with more powerful telescopes and other instruments, it is discovered that the universe is on the edge of a galaxy. Five, with more powerful telescopes and, and instruments, it is discovered that our galaxy is only one of many. Six, 
Charles Darwin, in 1859, publishes The Origin of Species. This will get its own 10 hour, I mean, 10 minute speech next year. Seven, from telescopes to microscopes. Just last week, you had a better view further and further and further out. As we discovered microscopes, we found out about germ theory, cell theory, and the DNA code. Three and a half giant leaps of history were from nothing to everything called Big Bang Theory, from chemistry to life, and from a single cell being four billion years ago to a multi-cell life one billion years ago. And then finally, biodiversity. Good stuff to know. Number one, this is wrong. I pointed out if you've probably had it in a science textbook, you've probably seen it in a museum as you were entering. There is not a straight line linear progressing from chimpanzees to modern man. This is wrong. Even when you put it on a bike rack and add one more man, a bicycle man, it's still wrong. An important reminder when dealing with the, develop, the biodiversity and the development of man, and that is branches, branches, branches. We'll come back to that in a moment. Remember, 99% of all the species that ever existed are now extinct. Once in every billion instances, the DA code is replicated imperfectly. And here's what I was talking about with branches, branches, branches. You can see that chimpanzees and uh, later sapiens, they divided long, long ago. And here are other prehistoric men, but they are not a direct line to Homo sapiens. There were branches and branches and branches. Why do I call these lectures Kissing Cousin Chattaqua? It was hoped that mapping the DNA sequence would simplify the journey towards modern Homo sapiens. Instead, it was discovered that Homo sapiens bred with Neanderthals. Likewise, Homo habilis and Homo erectus bred with other species. And further down the chain, meaning further back in time, there are many other examples of what are classified as separate species intermingling. It was a prehistoric frat party. A rough timeline, 13.8 billion years ago, the Big Bang Theory, space time begins. Notice I didn't say space and time. Space time is a single entity. Unfortunately, without copious amounts of recreational pharmaceuticals, our brains really can't hold that concept. 13.8 billion years ago, space time begins. 13.6 billion years ago, space cools off enough for the first molecules to be formed. Gravity causes the first stars to ignite. As these stars die and explode, heavier molecules are scattered. 4.5 billion years ago, our sun, a second, third, or even later generation, Johnny come lately is formed. Earth and other planets are formed out of the 1% local matter that the sun doesn't absorb. Four billion years ago, chemistry to biology, the first simple repeated RNA and later DNA codes and single cells organisms appear. One billion years ago, the first multi-cell life forms appear. So imagine that. It was a three billion year long process to go from a single cell being to a multi-cell being. Again, a number like three billion years, a number we really can't hold in our head. We really can't feel it. Say, so, yeah, yeah, I remember that. It was three billion years ago. It's amazing, it's incredible, it's beyond our easy comprehension. 530 million years ago, the first fish evolved. 368 million years ago, the first amphibians appear. Now 
230 million years ago, the first dinosaurs appear. 65 million years ago, the dinosaurs go extinct after dominating the planet for 165 million years. I want you to stop and think for a moment. Was this a good thing or a bad thing? There's no right answer. 7 million years ago, the first bipedal ancestors appear. Point five million years ago, the first flake and crude stone tools are developed. 2.4 to 1.6 million years ago, Homo habilis, tool man, walks the earth. 2.3 million years ago to at least 250,000 years ago, Homo erectus walks the earth. 200,000 years ago to 40,000 years ago, Neanderthals walked the earth. Homo sapiens, the first modern human form, the early hominoid pro predecessors between 200,000 and 300,000 years ago. The first modern humans began moving outside of Africa starting about 70 to 100,000 years ago. But get this, sapiens didn't develop a capacity for language until about 50,000 years ago. 125,000 generations since the appearance of the first human species. I want to clarify, when a scientist or a scientific paper uses the word human, they don't think, they're not describing the man or woman that's in front of you in the line in Safeway. They're describing a sapien that is bipedal, has opposable thumbs, a certain brain structure, a brain, certain brain size. 7,500 generations ago, modern humans physiological appear. 500 generations ago, civilization begins. And by this, I mean there was agriculture, then villages, then cities, then empires. 20 generations ago, year 1540, science. One generation ago, 1970 the internet became available to most people. Where do we go from here? Me, I introduce you to your cousins in many future speeches. You, you open those doors. Every page, every subject in this speech is one that you could spend anywhere between 10 hours, 10 years, 10 lifetime continuing to study and learn about. Think about all that has gone on before you. Remember how many ways our concept of the universe has changed and be open for more changes. Review science articles, but with a cautious grain of salt. And finally, above all, sit back and take in the wonder of it all.